Today, as we continue on with our biome ecosystem series, we're going to be talking about field crop systems and the who, what, when, where, why, and how this information can better help you grow plants. Let's get started. Now, by knowing the different ecosystems, it's very helpful because we can understand not only the original factors that help to develop a plant, from its precipitation, its altitude, to even the environmental factors or the potential rock types it can grow, but it can also help to dictate the amount of plant material that it may have in its cousins, from the desert materials, to the tropical forest, to the temperate forest, and the boreal forest. And by understanding that, we can help to determine the overall factors of what a plant develops in order to help it to better survive within its own climate that it's best suited for. Now when you f look at field crops, they are unique in the fact that they are man-made and they are located all over the world. And you can help to recognize these by the fact that they tend to be very monoculture. On times they do tend to have two or three different systems in them. For the most part though, they are very directive in the different types of crops that it have and they tend to be cash crops that the regional location can make a profit out of. In fact, regional crops such as these weren't even recognized as an ecosystem until the early 1990s. And so it is very dependent on how heavily they are managed. The average temperature of these ecosystems are going to change drastically worldwide based on where these farms are located. And they can change drastically based off of the humidity and everything that they are incorporated in. The precipitation itself, though, can be rather unique, however, because field crops, even though they will be determined based on where they're located, how much water they receive, whether it's the rainforest, the desert, they can be unique in the fact that they are artificially watered to help those crops out. And so, frequently, if it is in a rainforest or high rainfall systems, generally they are not artificially watered. However, if they are in a unique system, they are generally going to be watered by either an overspring system, whether it be a center pivot, it's pipe, but that is what makes it unique is that they are artificially watered. And so based off of the watering systems, it's generally not a problem because you can grow a wide range of crops with human interaction being done. The soil structure is similar in the fact that they can vary throughout the entire world based on what is being done, whether it is clay, sand. However, even though these individual systems are going to be dependent based on the world where they are being grown, they are unique in the fact that they can be manipulated by humans to better grow the regional cash crops, even though those regional crops that are grown are going to be picked for that area. If the area is uniquely short on nutrients, then they can artificially be added phosphorus, nitrates, phosphates, or if you need more organic matter, quite frequently there is going to be coconut core, green manures, other items that artificially are added. With this being a human-driven system, though, there are better ways to do it. That green manure is going to be the best one, but like mentioned previously, quite frequently there are items taken into effect to try and improve the soils to result in the best yield possible of those crops. With these crop systems though, they do tend to have very specific types of vegetation. Most of them, as mentioned previously, are going to be monoculture that is going to be best suited for mankind. Most often, it is going to be food crops. However, sometimes there is going to be cotton or hemp or other material used for human use, but may not be for consumption, whether it be for clothing or another type of system. 
when you're looking at these monocultures, most often you're going to have animals that are going to interact with those crops, whether they are skunks, raccoons, other items that are normally going to live in conjunction with humans, many times meadow systems. However, due to human encroachment and utilizing these systems, some regions have unique animals or predators that you can deal with. Like for India and China, when you're looking at some of their tea fields, they tend to have a problem when they are working with elephants encroaching those areas just because they are native to the land in which those farms are located. So quite frequently you will have the native creatures of those areas, but occasionally you will have domestic animals such as poultry, hogs, sheep, cattle as well that intermingle just that go in coordination with farms. When you're working with farms, these ecosystems often have collection points from outside sources and so because of that large nutrients are taken from other areas and dropped in so in other ecosystems that can be potential danger points that tend to lose nutrients these tend to gain excess nutrients and so because of that if there are water sources nearby they do tend to leach into those water areas and so these are primarily looked at as economic building houses. And so resources, more often than not, tend to get heavily taken out and so therefore are artificially replenished. That is the main unique thing about these ecosystems is they tend to be heavily man-managed, whereas other sea ecosystems tend to get away with not having as much human interference. Well, I would like to thank you for joining us for this journey as we take a very cursory glance at um, our look at bio ecosystems, in particular this one, which is field crop ecosystems, and hope to have see you next time. And now, here's a word from our sponsors. This episode of Yule Acres is brought to you by Yule Acres Grapefruit Naturally Scented Lip Balm. For more information about this product, click on the link in the description below.